he started having seizures when he was still just a few weeks old. Uh, it was hard to spot. His mother spotted him long before I did. When he was a few months old, he started having problems with breathing. He had a high fever. Took him to the hospital. They, we lived at the time we lived in uh, North Dakota. They flew us to Fargo, and he went to the hospital. And when we arrived there, the first doctor that saw him in pediatric intensive care told us that he would not live 24 hours. He can't walk without assistance. He doesn't speak, but he's healthy and enjoys his life. And he wakes up every day with a smile. Some people just accept him and it's like he's any other, any other person. Others, um, it's sort of like they say, they feel sorry for you. You know, that, you know gee, that's too bad. Like you, you got a kid and you kind of lost, lost out in the life lottery, which is, is really depressing. I mean, it doesn't make you angry, it just makes you depressed. Because his value doesn't come from what he can do. It comes from what he is. You know, that we, that we're all God's children and made in his image. The basic concept of assisted suicide I find is immoral at its core. But beyond that, when I realized what the threat it poses to people like my son, I just, I'm horrified. At what point do you say that you know, the life isn't worth living? You, talk, you have the quarterback of the football team, well, what if someone's on the third string? Are, is, are they worth living? Yeah. How about someone who couldn't make the team? Is, is their life, <laughs> life worth living? I mean, where do you draw the line as to how uh, what's worth living and what isn't. It's, it's his life and he's enjoying it. And uh, who am I to tell him that it's not of high enough quality for him to continue to live? My son's life is definitely worth fighting for.